Hey friend, Mike McCurry here. Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you so much for joining me once again today. I'm going to ask you if you would to grab your Bibles. Turn to the book of Psalms. We've kind of used this verse as a little bit of a jumping off point a few different times this week already. We're going to continue and possibly conclude our thought. We're talking about purity on the broadcast. My prayer, my hope, my aim is that something that we say will be of great help to you. Now, right now, I am outside. I'm in a beautiful gazebo here in north central Illinois or thereabouts. My geography is a little bit foggy sometimes. People ask me, uh, what route did you take? You take 71, you take 47. What'd you? I just follow the GPS. I'm sorry. I'm of this generation where I've, I've got the inability to uh, follow directions as well as I should, okay? So I'm working on that. I'm not resigned to it, but oftentimes the GPS comes in very handy. So anyway, I believe I'm in North Central Illinois. Um, when people ask me, where are you going next? Where'd you come from? I've got to pull out my calendar because I have no idea where I came from. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm where I am right now. And that's about the best I can give you. Uh, lots going on, many irons in the fire, but I appreciate so much your prayers for and with uh, the ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Turn to the book of Psalms 24, verse number three. While you do that, let me tell you about a gospel tract. I've got one right here called Overwhelmed. This gospel tract right here was the very first gospel tract I wrote some years ago, and I'd encourage you, go to BibleTracksInc.org, BibleTracksInc.org to get your very own copies today. You know as well as I do that there are a lot of people, even more so today, that are overwhelmed many folks struggling with many different issues of life, I'd encourage you to use gospel tracts in your daily life. I'm excited about what the days ahead hold. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to tune in to Bible Tract Echoes to keep up to date on what's going on with Bible Tracts Incorporated. Now, Psalm 24, verse number 3. Psalm 24, verse number 3 and 4 says this, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Friend, as I come to God, I, I mentioned this earlier in the week, the first thing I pray for is purity. I, I need God to cleanse me. I, I'm so wretched. I'm so, we all are so wicked but I can't put this on you. I know the man I am in the mirror. I know that I am, as Paul said, chief of sinners. I've got to get right before I can pray for anything else. And so that verse means much to me. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? Verse four, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart. How important is purity? Well, here's a, an historical illustration that may help you. We talked some months ago, I think, about Sir Ernest Shackleton and about the exploits that he did uh, triapsing through, uh, journeying through, adventuring, exploring through incredibly cold climates. Back in 1914, he embarked on the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition. One of the problems that they faced, the crew faced, was a lack of water. The water ran out, they had issues. And yet, they were surrounded by water, were they not? They were in the middle of the sea, but all the water around them, the ocean water, they couldn't drink it. Why? Because it wasn't pure. What those men, with their thirst, what they would have given, I wonder, for pure water. I ask you, friend, to please understand the importance of purity. We've talked about multiple different aspects, but what I want to jump into today, it's going to sound a little bit like a, um, a non sequitur. It's going to sound kind of off the wall, but I ask you to listen in intently. Get this, when it comes to purity, the algorithm is smarter than you. I'll say it again. The algorithm is smarter than you. Those of you that know what I'm talking about, you, you're, you have a little upturn of your corners of your mouth. You're smiling, grinning just a little bit. You know what I'm saying. Social media, you fill in the blank, whatever your guilty pleasure is, whatever you like to wake up and, and open up on your phone, whatever you like to go to sleep with at night. Friend, the algorithm is going to be the death of you. 
see all of these different uh, social media platforms. They've got software that they're built on and they've got these algorithms that show you what you want to see. You realize whether it be Facebook, the old standby, Instagram, the new ones of TikTok, all that type of stuff, the uh, Twitter or X or whatever they're calling it these days, you realize that their desire is to keep you, all of them, their desire is to keep you in that app, on that website, in that social media as long as possible. You know why? Because the longer you're there, the more ads you can see and the more money. You realize we are essentially just ATMs for some people writing code. You say, what does that do with purity? Well, here's a statement I wrote down in my, this is in my prayer journal. Purity is not, I'm trying to think of a better word, but right now I'm going to leave it as is. Purity is not possible with a life lived on social media. There's multiple reasons for it. One of it, one of those is because a life lived on social media is a life lacking reality. Social media is not reality. It's a life lacking accountability because you can look at all sorts of things. You can read all sorts of things. You can participate in all sorts of things that you probably would never do in real life, but you can do it with no accountability whatsoever. Your accountability partners are nameless, faceless people who you probably never met in real life. But I say again, the algorithm is smarter than you. There's a reason that at this moment, actually, I shouldn't say at this moment, that I have not had, I had TikTok on my phone for, I don't know, a week or two? And it hasn't been on since. Because it's foul. It's vile. It's disgusting. I'll be honest with you. You say, but you don't understand the good things that can come with it. Maybe, friend. But I would doubt I'm putting myself on a pedestal. I realize that humanity is humanity. I would doubt that you're so much stronger of a Christian that you can avoid all the temptations that are available. You realize that I'll go through seasons like right now, right now, I don't have Facebook and Instagram on my phone. You know why? For no other reason than the, than, than the fact that they're just time wasters. That I can, they can soak up an hour in a blink of an eye. Not to mention that they can also be foul, vile, and disgusting. You say, Brother Micah, I, I can't believe that you, you're, you're a younger guy, a techie guy, a guy that knows uh, you know, advertising and marketing and social media advertising even and all this types of stuff, and you don't even have them on your phone? No. Friend, the risk is not worth the reward. And it never will be, I don't believe. I realize that they are tools. But I also realize that when I'm holding a chainsaw, I'm incredibly careful. And you know what? I don't carry a, a chainsaw, a running chainsaw throughout my daily life. I pick up a chainsaw for the express purpose of cutting down a tree. Then I put it back. I put the little sheath back over the, uh, the blade. I put it back in the case and it goes back in my garage and I don't pick it up again. I pick up the tool when I need to pick up the tool. I don't walk around going zzz, 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 running a chainsaw throughout my entire, it's a dangerous tool. I definitely don't have it around my kids. You say, brother Micah, your kids are six and four. Do they have phones yet? Absolutely not. They have little tablets they play on every once in a while. We try to minimize that time as much as possible. But you realize we don't connect those tablets to the internet. Very seldom are they ever connected unless we turn on the Wi-Fi, punch in the code, and turn it on so they can maybe watch something educational or something along those lines, something that can't be downloaded to the tablet. And you know what? I, I don't know what age. Maybe I need to talk to my wife about this, when it will be. But I would hazard a guess my kids are going to be late into their teenage years before they have their own phones. You say, but... I'm talking to parents right now. I'm kind of getting off the trail of what I intended to talk about, but I think this goes right along with purity. You say, Brother Micah, uh, I can't believe that you would hinder your children like that. What about, what about this, Brother Micah? What if uh, your children are away from you? They need to contact you. Well, number one, maybe there's not a whole lot of wisdom in them being away from you like that for that length of time. But number two, the risk very likely isn't worth the reward.
or if you absolutely have to get one of those phones that does nothing but text and call. No internet, no apps, no social media. Friend, we are so flippant with these very dangerous things. And I realize I'm 31 years old, okay? I don't trumpet that often. Most of the times people think I'm older than I am and I'm perfectly happy with that. But this is one of those times I, I will tell you how old I am. So you understand, I am firmly, if you will, in the younger generation relatively. I, when I'm talking to teenagers, I realize I'm double their age oftentimes. But to many listening right now, I am firmly of the younger generation. And I'm telling you, I don't care if you're 60 or 70 or 80 years old, you probably don't need Facebook and Instagram. You say, but that's how I keep in touch with people. Does the mail still work? Can you write letters? You say, that, that, that that's a little harsh, Micah. Friend, your pornography addiction is a problem. Friend, the amount of ruined lives that I come across, people struggling with very difficult situations. And you know where most of it started? This device right here that I'm holding in my hands. You've got a strip club and a casino in your hands. Back in the day, you had to go to the CD side of town. You had to t show your ID. You had to, there was, it was a high friction thing. It was very difficult to do. You had to specifically ask for that magazine hidden behind the counter. Now, you can do it from the privacy of your own bedroom and no one, quote unquote, will ever know because God does know. Purity, friend. I'll be blunt. I did not intend for this to become a three or even four a day series on purity. But I'll spend often, this is not pat me on the back, I'll spend three and four and five and seven and ten minutes sometimes praying for this very first item on my list. Praying for and making practical steps, a plan of attack for how I am going to, I'm going to strive to, I can't, I don't live pure, I'm not perfect, I never will be, but I want to be as close to him as possible. Thank you so much for listening today. My prayer is that you have a great day for his glory. Please strive to be pure. Maybe something I've said today has shocked you enough to bother you, to irritate you. If so, I'm, that was not my intention, but maybe, just maybe, the Holy Spirit is convicting you. Thank you for listening. Have a great day for his glory. We'll talk to you very soon. Tune in tomorrow. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample booklet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Dwight, Illinois, 60420. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve him.